How are we doing everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro 10 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about custom smart controls here inside of Logic. So, as you can see, I have a classic electric piano here, just chilling. This is going to be the default for our software instrument. So, very electric piano-y. And we're going to enable smart controls on this. And we can go to View and Show Smart Controls. We can press B on our keyboard, or we can enable it here in that top menu. And so this is what pops up. This interface is going to be different depending on what track you have selected. And in this case, this is the default view for the classic electric piano. Another quick thing to note here is over here is the arpeggiator button on the top right. When we select this, an arpeggiator will be put on the track. So if we play this instrument, the arpeggiator has completely taken over its functionality. And so if we open it up, we can actually change parameters over here and it will actually change inside of the instrument. So that's kind of cool. If you want to learn more about the arpeggiator, I have another tutorial on it, and I will link you to that if you'd like. But now let's get right back into these smart controls. Open up the information tab over here on the left, and we can change our default view. Right now it's set on automatic smart controls, so this is the default. But we have a, different, a bunch of different options for what we want to view or how we want to view it. And the most knobs that we can have are 12. So let's just select generic wood. And this is what it looks like. You can see some of them are unmapped. So if we get out of this information view, those unmapped uh, knobs just disappear. They're not there at all, which is kind of nice. Uh, so it simplifies, us, simplifies it down if we're not using some. We have two options here. We have parameter mapping and external ma assignment. External assignment is really easy. You can, if you want to show you this, if I learn it, I can, you know, press or we, I can twist the knob on my external connected interface. This is a MIDI controller here. I can twist it and it will map to whatever I just twisted. Uh, so that's kind of nice. It's a very easy way to hook up a, a an actual external instrument into Logic. Very simple way. And then parameter mapping is where we want to spend some time. So basically what's going on here is this is where we're mapping the function of this knob to a certain parameter on our track or in our instrument or in a plugin. So uh, we can select the name here, Vintage Electric Piano Drive Gain, and we can, you know, do some different things. We can grab and we can get at those global track variables, volume, pan, solo, mute, etc. Uh, we can go into the actual instrument, the electric piano instrument, and we can get some non-automatable things. Uh, also, we can you know, put a different plugin on it. Let's put a chorus on this. Uh, so now that there's a chorus on this track, we can go in and we can get at all the things that chorus has to offer. And we can all map that to a certain uh, a certain knob here inside of Smart Controls. So I'm going to get rid of that here. All right. So we can also set the lower and higher bounds of what we want to do. So I'm just going to select, uh, you know, actually drive gain is pretty fun. Uh, so I can increase this to set the lower gain and the higher gain, or that sorry, low range and high range max and min. And uh, we can open up the instrument here to the right of the name that I was talking about. And let's uh, check out this gain now. As I increase, you can see that all the way right is all the way right uh, for the gain, but all the way to the left, all the way down is about halfway. So we've set our min and max on that button or on that dial. All right, we can also invert it. So if we, if I open that up again and show you, all the way to the right is going to be all the way to the left in this case. And to, as I go to the left, it's going to turn right. So we can invert it. And as you can see, this was mapped linearly. And what I mean by that is, as you increase, you get a linear uh, a linear way. So if I if I get at, I, be I believe here. All right. All right. So as I increase, it'll increase linearly. I can change it to an exponential, as so. I can actually change this exponential to be whatever I want. It's kind of like automation, honestly. You can even press and put little little buttons, I guess, and then you can these are little points you can automate around. Uh, whatever you get here, as you you know move your knob, it'll map across to this this line that you've created and you can copy it and paste it to other tracks you can invert it and you can reset it and do whatever you want here you can change the min and max here inside of this interface as well one final thing I want to show you guys is uh, 
in this example here, I have a tremolo and phase mapped to this particular knob. So how do we do that? If I go to something, let's go to reverb. If I click on it, we can add a mapping. So you can add multiple mappings to a single dial, which is pretty cool. So if I go back here, you can see that the min is from 1 and the max is to 1 over 64. And if I go to tremolo, the same thing, only it's inverted. So this means that if I'm all the way to the... I don't want to control in here. Select that, learn. All right. So if I'm all the way to the left, it's going to be tremolo very high. All the way to the right is going to be phaser very high. So let's check and make sure that's what's going on here. And that's exactly what's going on. So it's kind of nice so we can control multiple values here with a single knob inside of Smart Controls. And that's really all I had to show you guys. If you have any more questions, hit me up in the comments or in a message. Comment, rate, subscribe like usual. And take that survey in the description below to choose my next tutorial. And overall, just freaking stay boss. You know what I'm saying? Stay boss. And I'll be seeing you all very soon. Have a great day.